Hi, in this video, we're introducing chapter three. We're introducing how statistics allow us to display and describe quantitative variables. First, I'd like to share with you a PowerPoint slideshow that uh, shows you some of the uh, graphs that we will be introducing that display information about quantitative variables. Here's one example. This graph helps us understand the income distribution of households in the United States in the year 2005. And this graph helps us understand in 2013 data that compares two variables, something we will be exploring in chapter four, uh, income on the horizontal axis versus net worth of households in the vertical axis. As you can see, uh, when you have two quantitative variables, we observe and ask different questions than when we only look at one variable at a time. Hence why the second module of the course, exam two, covers quantitative variables in two separate chapters. In the first chapter, chapter three, we will be looking at how to describe one quantitative variable and all its different characteristics. And in chapter four, we will be looking at the notion of how do we look at associations between two quantitative variables. And in that case, we're gonna be looking at not dependence or independence, that was how we cataloged association in categorical variables. In quantitative variables, we call the association study of two quantitative variables correlation. And we use a method called linear regression to begin studying correlation. So let's begin outlining chapter three. So in chapter three, we begin by looking at data that happens to be one, one quantitative variable. Back in chapter two, when we were studying categorical variables, there was some, only one thing we could describe statistically. And remember, statistics are numerical adjectives of data, adjectives that describe the data. And when we're qualifying, when we're using qualifying information, the only kinds of questions we can ask is questions about how often these categories repeat. Hence, in chapter two, we only looked at frequency or contingency or percentages and counts that helped us understand how often these different categorizations occurred. Now that we're dealing with quantitative variables, and specifically with one quantitative variable, quantitative variables lend themselves to um, a lot more to be explained about them. And usually when we use mathematics to describe a quantitative variable, we usually start from lowest to highest. And we use mathematics to help us order values, rank and sort values. So we will keep a mathematical use of uh, description and we're gonna be calling statistics that measure that, statistics by that describe the quantitative variable by rank or place. So there will be statistics by rank or place. And these statistics will have various names. The first statistic that we'll study in this context is called the median. And that's because it, when we start thinking about the data, we start trying to focus not only on the values that we observe, but also on how often these values occur. So the median is a good place to start describing data because the median corresponds to the middle place in the data. 
Middle place div divides a data set into two regions, a region that is the top half and another region, the bottom half. We also describe data statistically by looking at the smallest value. And we call the smallest value the minimum. Likewise, the largest value is called the maximum. So the minimum and the maximum then frame our entire span of value for a variable because it is the smallest and the largest number. In statistics, we often use a method developed by a statistician by the name of Tukey. So we call it Tukey's method. And in Tukey's method, we also find two more statistics that help us divide the data into quarters, kind of like a football game. So quarters allow us to put markers in the data that provide us with access to looking at four different quarters of data the lowest quarter, the highest quarter of the data, the second quarter of the data, and the third quarter of the data. And rather than using the term quarter, we call these quartiles of data. So statistically speaking, there are five quartiles. And quartiles are the five statistics that describe a particular variable and while you're describing places in the data you're also explaining how often values recur in the data because the number of data points between each quartile corresponds to one quarter 25 percent of the data once we have identified locations in the data starting from the middle we will then describe something called spread and spread refers to the variations that we see in the data. And there are two measures of spread around the middle place, the middle half and the whole data set. So the spread of the middle half is referred to as the interquartile range while the spread of the whole data set is referred to as the range. So the range is the maximum and as the minimum. And the spread of the middle half, the inner quartile range, is defined as quartile 3 minus quartile 1. Aside from looking at the data in a setting where all values are basically described to start with as if they were all equally valid or equally valuable, we then develop from Tukey's method a way to identify if there are strange values or unusual values in the data that perhaps happen to be extremely low or extremely high. And we call those extreme values outliers. So the study of outliers actually is the next concept of importance. And finally, the last concept of importance in the studying one variable is the concept of shape of the data. And we talk about symmetry of the data. That's when values are arranged symmetrically, i.e. equally distant from the middle out. And we also talk about skewed data, data that exhibits more variation on the high end values skewed to the right, or on the low end values skewed to the left. So in all, when we're describing a variable in chapter three, we begin by studying the center of the data. The center of the data then allows us to rank places in the data, places or locations particular five locations called the five number summary. And after we rank places or locations, 
we then proceed to study how the values are spread around the middle. This spread allows us to capture the variability of the values. That would be the interquartile range and the range. Once we're able to measure how values are spread around the middle, we then proceed to study a fourth concept. We then begin to study the possibility or the presence of outliers in data. Outliers are extremely high or extremely low values. The high values are referred to as upper outliers. The small numbers, lower outliers. And once outliers are studied, then we can study the shape of the data via, in the case of statistics by rank, uh, we talk about a graph that we call a box plot. So that'll be our first part of studying this chapter. The second part of studying chapter three will be to look at statistics by amount, statistics by magnitude, by the value of the numbers in the data rather than by where they rank or place. So rather than being sorted from smallest to largest in this context, will usually have values that start being measured around the middle. And in this context, the statistics that measures middle value is called a mean. So the mean measures the middle value, not the middle place, the middle value. And around the middle value, we measure variation or spread. So we, after we find the middle value of a data set, we then measure how those values are spread around the middle. And those are referred to by two statistics of spread. And those statistics of spread are called the variance and the standard deviation. Once we have learned to describe how data values differ in magnitude from the middle value, we then move to measure locations in the data, specific values in the data. Values that tend to be located around the mean, equidistant from the mean. Those specific locations are called standard scores. or Z scores. And once we measure Z scores, then we can find outliers as defined by locations in the data, magnitudes of value in the data that are extremely high or extremely low. So once again, we have a second way to conceptualize what we would call extreme values, extremely high numbers or extremely low numbers. Numbers that have a very positive and high z-score, numbers that have a very negative, large negative number of valued z-scores. And those are gonna be called outliers. When we combine the values that we see separated by standard scores 
we create subsegments of values and these subsegments of values we can then try to assess how often these happen and in the creation of uh, of such measures of frequency we can then build a graph that helps us describe shape again and uh, that graph is referred to as a histogram so we once again will have a way to study the five characteristics that I mentioned earlier in that purple box, except that in this context, the five characteristics are gonna have a different order of presentation. The first thing that we study is center by calculating the mean. studying center though we don't study locations we study the spread around the data we study the variance and the standard deviation and after calculating the spread in the data we then compute locations so the order varies in what you are presenting when you are describing data by magnitude Center, spread, locations, locations, standard scores. And after we measure locations in the data of importance, we then measure as a fourth item outliers and as a fifth item shape. A graph that we call a histogram. topics also exist in this chapter. And uh, we will cover them in future videos that are that I'm going to be uh, posting over the next uh, few days. But essentially, we have uh, two different ways of describing and displaying data. One way is called by rank or by place. And the second way is by amount or magnitude of the values. And our goal will be to competently describe individual variables so that we can then use these tools from chapter three in chapter four to then describe relationships between quantitative variables. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that the video evoked a lot of thoughts and a lot of questions that you're welcome to comment on the discussion part of this video. Thank you.